In this video, I am going to show some progress with my Dawn Redwoods, which are here, and go through the process of doing this styling uh, and pruning. So this is my biggest, which I bought from a nursery uh, last year. And it was pretty much a uh, straight stem and really woody. So it was not easy to bend. So I, I did wire it and tried to bend it but wasn't able to get much movement into it. Now I chopped the top off. I don't know if you can see here the, the chop that I made. But all that's really happening here is that this, so I'm achieving taper, but this is just going straight up and I've still got a fairly straight tree. So what I'm going to do is air layer this and there's a point around here where I've got a little bit of inverse taper. So I'm going to air layer it just below the bulge so that the bulge will kind of form a flare in the soil. So that's what I'm going to do with that. So that's that one, um, and I've got these two here, which I purchased from Heron's Bonsai over the winter, and they are obviously much younger and completely flexible, so I can wire these now and they're just going to be fine. So I'm going to move the camera and bring it closer in and I'm going to do the air layering first and then I'm going to wire the easy trees. Dawn Redwood, a botanical name, Metasequoia glyptostraboides. This tree was actually discovered by fossil before the first living specimen. So the first fossil was named in and described in 1941 and then I think retrospectively there were some recordings of the tree but the kind of more botanical discovery of a living specimen seemed to be in 1946 and that was where the tree was named so Metasequoia uh, means like a sequoia, and then glyptostraboides means like the gl glyptostrobus pensilis, which is the Chinese swamp cypress. So it's like like a like a sequoia, like a swamp, like a Chinese swamp cypress. So it's a, like a super borrowed name. So the tree is endangered in its native habitat in China, but hugely cultivated in the West. So the first specimen was grown in the US from seed in, I think it was one year after it was named. So it's named in 1946 and 1947. And the first specimen planted in the UK was in Cambridge Botanical Garden in 1948 and I believe that tree is still there by the lake. So that's the, those are the fun facts. Right, so um, I don't know if you can see but here is where there's a bit of a swell and it's kind of ugly. So that is where I think I will air layer from. And then this is, even this is quite stiff already, so it's not gonna, but it will move. That will move. Um, 
So yeah, I'm going to air layer from, from here. So I've got my air layering pen knife, uh, which is just an ordinary pen knife. I've already cleaned the blade with rubbing alcohol. So I'm going to into the bulge, I'm going to go to the midpoint I'm going to, the roots are going to go above the cut, so I'm going to start cutting below the bulge. To be honest, these branches are probably ultimately going to come off. actually ripped it going up, which is definitely a mistake, <laughs> so I'm going to have to peel higher, but hopefully that is visible in the shot. Amazing. I'm just going to try again in case this shot wasn't visible. Here is the bark. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do another cut a bit above where I've made the existing one just because I pulled away more bark than I should have. And I don't think this is going to harm because I think one of the biggest problems with air layerings is they heal up. So making a bigger section makes it less likely that it's going to heal or like it will take longer to heal and in that time it's really difficult to see where your cut is <laughs> I think when you're older eyesight isn't as good. Okay. So this Is my zone where the roots will come out of and I just don't think that's big enough. Now taking these branches off I believe will leave um, some tissue that is more likely to root. So Just sort of clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to get the camera and just do a close up of this uh, cut. Here we are. Now I don't think I've done a brilliant job of this, but the whole point is not to be intimidated by it and just give it a go. 
Now, that's where, that's a wound from a previous cut, but I think that it's all gonna help. Um, So, the next thing to do is to get the sphagnum moss and the plastic and um, also some rooting hormone and uh, wrap that up. All right, so here is my rooting hormone. I'm just going to brush that above the cut it's quite good because the bark is quite craggy so this is adhering that's that done Here is my moss, which is a bit brown, and a plastic bag. Yeah. Moss feels a bit wet. I don't want to squeeze it because I don't want to compact it. So it's like damp. And then I've got some wire to wrap around. So let's thinking whether I should right. I'm going to leave these branches because they'll support it stop it from drifting down videoing this but it's not actually visible. <laughs> Hopefully that's more visible. So the key is the top bit needs to be exposed to the moss. That's looking good. All right, that feels good. Lots of moss. Then wire up and around. And then really tight because we don't want this to 
let the moisture evaporate. So, I think that's done. Let's have a look. Might take a bit of this foliage off as well. So that the demands on the not yet present roots are reduced. I'll take out this leader. And then take out the tops. There. Done, I reckon. Should I do any work on the lower part of the tree? I wonder. I should brush off all of the rooting hormones that I've spilt everywhere. Um, I think some of this upward pointing foliage I'll chop. Quite a lot of stuff coming out from the same point here. Let's get rid of this upward one completely. Very leggy growth down here. And there are some buds, but let's cut back. So with this tree, I'm not really going to do anything that interesting to warrant videoing it. It's more just of a record to show what it was like the first time I wired it. So I think the actual, when I bought this, the, wood, the woody part kind of stops about here. So that's all new growth just this year and then I think it was almost like a stick I don't even think these branches were here so I've got some old like used wire which I'm going to use and um, I'm just going to give it like a loose a loose wiring just to get some movement in and that's it. Uh, really long internode there. I wonder if that's because I had it in the shade. 
then the internodes get shorter. It's almost like it was in the shade and then it stuck its head out of the shade and then the internodes got closer together. And then I've got some stuff happening down here at the bottom, which I'll just leave because it will contribute to taper. All right, let's get this in. I didn't want to wire this straight away because it looked so flimsy and I didn't want to damage the buds. Now this wire is quite stiff. I wonder if it is a mistake as I'll end up. Breaking the tree. These trees are so vigorous that if, even if you break anything, it will just grow back. All right, so it doesn't really matter what I do to this, I don't think, as long as it has some movement. One of the things that I think you've got to be careful of is that you don't make your first bends too shallow. I think you just got to get some movement in it. And make it as 3D as possible. It's difficult to make the movement in three dimensions much easier in two. There, that's cool. So I reckon a couple of those branches might have snapped, but whatever happens from the broken branches, I think new ones will just spring out. <laughs> 
from the axle. So that's cool, I'm happy with that. 